I think that's a very interesting topic. Uh, and of course, depending on who you talk to and what quarter of Western society you talk to or any part of the world, they're going to obviously have very different definitions of what sustainability means. In Western society, from my perspective, by and large, most people mean how can we maintain our current lifestyle uh, without depleting that which sustains that lifestyle into the future. And of course, environmental groups, I feel, are struggling with this whole idea. And, and uh, industries in Western society have um, taken over the use of the term for their purposes. So it's very interesting. And, and sustainability, again, in, in Western society, words tend to diminish its meaning. And the English language, in my opinion, tends to segment out a part of a whole. And sustainability, uh, taken from that perspective, is, n is, f is f too small a term from uh, what I would consider to be a, a native perspective or a perspective of people who have had sustained and intimate contact with the immediate environment for countless generations. Uh, sustainable, because we don't have such a term, because we live it. And that has been key and central uh, to people being able to live and, like my people have, for, uh, sustain themselves and thrive for literally 10,000 years. That's 6,000 years before the height of the pyramid cultures. Uh, and, and how did we do it? And we did it by basically embodying the whole idea of uh, relationship, of uh, reciprocity, of uh, being able to think generations ahead from our decisions today. Uh, so for example, I'll give you specific examples. Uh, when we go out and, and pick berries, we don't pick berries from a single location and we don't take all the berries that are there and we don't use these scoopers that, that people use today. I, I watch uh, picking, uh, you know, scraping berries off the bushes and destroying the bushes in the process. Um, when we pick flowers, even when we use the flowers for dyes, we'd pick every seventh flower so that we're not picking from one different place. Uh, and of course we do it with a presence of mind, of uh, being present in the moment, of being aware, of having uh, an underlying sense of reverence for what we're doing, um, and understanding the implications of what we're doing of this single plant in terms of the entire ecology in which the plant comes from. You know, in the native worldview, generally speaking, um, everything is connected, profoundly so, far beyond what more pe most people understand. And so a single action of walking across the tundra, for example, here in Alaska, has major implications for insects, has implications for plants, and has implications for everything that interacts with that, has implications for that land in that particular area in which we walk. I mean, it just, it, you, one has to be very deeply aware, not in a mental sense, but in an embodied sense uh, of awareness, which is very difficult to explain uh, in Western terms what that really means. But basically, it's a, a level of intimate and profound connection whereby the human body is in alignment and in harmony with uh, the environment in which we're in. And there's an intelligence inherent in us that if we allow it to go and we don't function simply from the head, uh, allow it to operate, will bring us more into alignment with creation.